How's it going guys? It's John of All Trades and in this video, I'll be walking you through on how to download and install Visual Studio on Windows. Install the .NET Core SDK. Create a new project. Write your first code. Build and run your application. Publish your application. And as well as tips and tricks on how to navigate through the Visual Studio interface how to use some of the common shortcuts, and how to customize the environment for your specific needs. So without further ado, let's get started right after this intro. To download the latest version of the Visual Studio, let's head over to their page, visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads. And once you are on the page, you want to download Visual Studio under Community tab because it's only free. And this is what I've been using in my previous semester's object-oriented programming class in C Sharp. So let's download this one. Once it's done downloaded, let's click on the file and you will be prompted to install it. So just click Yes. and click continue so once everything is set you will be prompted to choose workload and for this tutorial we will only be using the dotnet desktop de development workload and this is used to build wpf windows forms and console applications using c sharp so what we are only aiming for this uh, tutorial is to build console applications so we don't need the other workloads here you'll only be using this one however keep in mind that if you decided to to do some web development some mobile development game development with unity and other stuff you can add or remove workloads in your visual studio so hit let's hit install and let's wait for this once it's finished. Once the installation is complete, click launch and the Microsoft Visual Studio will open. So this window will pop up and at first you may not be able to see anything here. That is because it's your first time on this environment. However, don't worry about it first because once you've started coding, it will appear here. But before we proceed, let's ensure first that we have installed our .NET Core SDK or the Software Development Kit. So if you haven't installed it yet, uh, let's cl close this first. You can head over to your browser and you can download the latest version of the .NET Core SDK from the Microsoft official website .net.microsoft.com slash download. And once you're on the page, there are two options here that we can choose to. Ideally, you want to download the .NET framework that has its long-term support. That is the .NET 6.0. However, for this tutorial, you can also use .NET 7.0 because it is the newer version. And I've heard there are a lot of cool and amazing features here. But probably we won't be able to maximize in our tutorial series because most of it are pretty much advanced already so either of these will do and for your information i've already downloaded these two dotnet frameworks all right so in order to check if you have successfully installed the dotnet core sdk on your computer you can follow these steps first is to open command prompt then in the command prompt you will type in .NET dash dash version and press enter. And it will appear here what .NET framework is currently installed in your computer. Note that the latest version will only appear here. Another way to check is by opening your Visual Studio, create a new project, click next, click next, and you will see what framework you are currently on in the additional informations tab click the drop down menu 
So the .NET Framework installed in my computer is the .NET 6.0 long-term support and the .NET 7.0 standard term support. If the SDK is not installed, you will see an error message indicating that the .NET command is not recognized. In this case, you will need to download and install the SDK again. Once everything is set, let's create a new project. First, you will see there are a lot of platforms here, but in this tutorial, we will only be using console application. So click console app, hit next, and let's name our project. So for our first project, let's name it Hi C Sharp. Now, there are two naming conventions where you can name your project. It's either by using the Pascal case, such as in this case, or by using camel case, where the first letter is lowercase, such as this one. But either way, it works for the project name. So I'll just use the Pascal case for my project name as standard. And let's don't forget to set the location where our projects will be stored. So for this tutorial, I will store my projects in the downloads folder. And let's create a new folder here. And I'll just name it C Sharp OOP Tutorial Series. Select folder. And we're good to go. Hit next. And this is where you will have to choose what .NET framework you will be working on. But for this tutorial, let's just use the .NET 7.0 standard term support. Now, you may be wondering whether to hit the tick box here or not to hit the tick box here. Clicking this one basically just, let's create. In our code editor here, it will generate the namespace, the internal class program, as well as the main function here. But what will happen if we do not click the tick box? So for that, let's just close this program and create a new project. And let's uncheck this one. Hit create. And this is what will appear in our code editor. If you see this, don't freak out because it's normal. Visual Studio shortened our code by removing the namespace and the internal class. So what we are seeing right now is what's inside the main function. So in order to learn more about this, about this change, you can go to this link for more information. Clicking and not clicking the checkbox is just basically the same. What it does is by default, where the checkbox is not checked, it's just it simplifies your code. But if you check the tick box, it will expound the code by showing the namespace and the class where your main function is on. But these two programs are just basically the same, an output. So let's try to run these two programs to show you what I mean by that. So let's click the start icon or press F5. Here you can see it outputs hello world. How about the other one? Let's click the start icon or F5. And still, it's the same output. But for this tutorial, let's just check the tick box and practice coding with this format. All right, so I'll just close the, the other window. And now let's proceed into writing your first code. But first and foremost, I'm going to zoom the text first in order for you to see clearly what I... And there are a couple of ways to do that. One that I find the easiest is to just hold control plus scroll wheel up. And if I want to minimize or reduce the size of my text, I'll just scroll down. Control plus scroll down. You can also use the keyboard shortcut control shift period and click it a couple of times to maximize the text. And to reverse, control plus shift plus comma. So I'll just leave it uh, large like this in order for it to be visible. In case you may be wondering, what does console.writeline means? If you're familiar with 
programming languages. It's just very similar with other programming languages, keywords such as print in Python or printf in C programming. So basically what it does is it outputs or displays to our console what is between the quotation marks such as hello world. So let's run this one. In order to run our program much faster and you will see me using this a lot in our tutorial is to press the other start icon which is start without debugging or control F5. And this is our output for this block of code. Now we can always modify what's inside console.write line and first I would like to type hi C sharp and try to output that one. And it displays here hi C sharp. In order to add another line after the hi C sharp, we can type another block of console.write line. But but you may be wondering why a lot of things are happening on your screen right now. It's just simply the built-in feature in Visual Studio called IntelliSense that provides you suggestions and help with writing your code. So it basically predicts what most likely you are going to type next. And, and if you accept the suggestion, you can click tab twice, like this one, and type in whatever you want to type after high C sharp. But for me, I just want to make it simple. And I just want to type in, this is John of all trades. Now, you may see this squiggly mark. And basically, this is an error. Down here below, you will see this X mark. And it will show the number of error that is currently on your code editor. And when you click this one, it will show that error and which line this error exists. So it expects a semicolon. So let's type in semicolon. But what happens if we forget to type in the semicolon and run our program instead? Our program will not compile. So let's just click no. And it, it will show all the error down here below. Uh, so let's just correct that error and hit and run our program. So you can see here now, after the line high C sharp, down below, it displays the next block of string, which is this is John of all trades. Uh, let's close this one. There is also another way where you can do this without typing another block of console.write line. So let's just erase this block of code. One shortcut that I often use when erasing a block of code is just to press Ctrl plus X. And it erases the entire block of code. After C sharp, you can type in forward slash N. This means new line. And I'll just add this is chan of all trades. Now let's run this code again and we've got the same output all right so once everything is said and done and you are already satisfied with your first code and since it's your first code you want to share it with somebody else so in order for us to do that we can publish our code so first let's hit on build build solution or you can use the keyboard shortcut, Control shift b So let's just do that. However, if you've already run your program, such as start without debugging or, or start with debugging, it will automatically build your program. So once that is done, next is you will have to set the debug here on the upper left into release. On the Solutions Explorer, you will right click on your project and hit publish. Now you will be prompted to choose which of these you want to publish your code to. But for this tutorial, I'll show you how to publish your code locally or in your computer. So let's hit on the folder, 
click next and folder again click next you can choose the folder location in my case I want to save it into this PC downloads and C sharp OOP tutorial series hi C sharp and I'll just add a new folder here name it and you will see a green check mark here and that means that it successfully published your program so let's hit close and once you see this ready to publish just hit on publish and let's open the folder where our first program is located let's open our folder and now you may be presented with different versions of your application with different file extensions but by default we can always run our program using the executable file the one that has the dot exe file extension so let's double click this one to run our application so we've run into an inconvenience here it automatically closes our executable file once we op we've opened it so there's some modifications that we need to change in our code in order for it to remain open and close it whenever we want to so in order for us to do that is just let's close this one let's close this publish window head back to our code click debug let's add another C sharp keyword that is console that read sorry read key and let's let's compile our code or build it and once the build is successful let's publish now our program so publish and click publish okay so it our file has already been updated let's open the folder and let's double click our executable file all right so now you can see this is now our first application so in order for us to close this one we can always hit the close button or alt f4 or press any key to close it so here you go so congratulations you've already made your first application in c sharp by default all of your publishable builds will be automatically stored in let's just check in high c sharp one our folder high c sharp inside this bin folder inside the debug inside the framework then you can also see your executable file here you can always share or publish your code without going through the process that we did a while ago just double click your executable file and and this will be exactly the same as the program that we published a while ago all right we're back to visual studio our c sharp ide or integrated development environment so there are a couple of ways where we can customize our ide and the first thing that i want to show you is how you can customize your visual studio theme and in order for you to do that is you can head to tools from the file menu bar and click tools then click options and you can see here your color theme so let's try in blue oh that's so bright how about the other one okay I don't think that changes a lot okay I'll take it dark I think this is what we had by default okay now this is more soothing to the eyes All right next is the light so I have a mixed feeling about this but let's do it anyway for the sake of demonstration okay that's so bright man <laughs> okay let's just try the last one use system set setting I wonder what it does okay I think it's the same with the dark theme but I'll take it let's use dark as our default setting because it's more 
eye friendly alright so that's for the Visual Studio color theme you can also customize your theme by heading to tools and clicking the theme and you'll see the default themes that are installed in your system you can always get more themes by clicking get more themes it will prompt you to Visual Studio's marketplace where you can choose theme kinda want to try the cobalt theme I think this looks kinda cool let's try this one download right so how do I use this you have just to click this so just click install just clicked and tasks a couple of times there alright so the installation is complete but apparently Visual Studio must be closed in order for it to start installing so for that let's open up again our Visual Studio and now you can see on this side your recently opened solution file and the most recent will appear here on on the top so just click this one to reopen it again alright then let's try on with our new team the that's cobalt too let's try that mmm this kinda looks cool though not gonna lie but I still use the dark theme anyway you can also customize your keyboard shortcuts by heading to tools options and keyboard just so you know I haven't really messed up with this so I just use the default settings for my keyboard shortcuts but this is a good thing to know whenever you are looking for the shortcut that suits your needs Visual Studio also allows us to customize this code editor that suits our needs so in order for us to do that you just head to tools options head to text editor under general tab you can check w whatever suits your needs here like you can view white spaces on your code and view zero width characters as well so let's check this you will see a subtle mark here that will show your white spaces to revert that let's just uncheck this one okay so that'll be all for our first episode of C Sharp programming tutorial and for our next video we will be discussing about variables, data types, and identifiers in C Sharp. Once again, this is John of All Trades. I thank you for watching.